Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Tiffany here at McDonough Public Library for video number two of our chapter book series. And I'm so excited to be telling you about some of our chapter books that we still have coming in. In fact, this morning when I came in, there were four new ones that were on my desk. So I'm going to go ahead and do all eight books today. Um, I'm going to start with our younger readers and their chapter books first. So I have one book that is for readers who've moved on from level readers but aren't quite ready for a really concrete story yet. Um, and then I'm going to go to our little bit older readers that are still hanging out in our children's department. So are you guys ready? All right, let's get started. All right, so our first story here is by Kate D. Camillo. It is Stella Endicott and the Anything is Possible poem. It is part of the Tales from Deco Wu Drive series. Um, if you have read any of the Mercy Watson series, some of our older readers, uh, this still includes some of those Mercy Watson characters. So you might still be interested in checking it out just for a real quick read. All right, let's see what's up with Stella in this story. Stella Endicott loves her teacher, Miss Liliana, and she is thrilled when the class is assigned to write a poem. Stella crafts a beautiful poem about Mercy Watson, the pig who lives next door, a poem complete with metaphor and full of curiosity and courage. But Horace Broom, Stella's irritating classmate, insists that Stella's poem is full of lies and that pigs do not live in houses. And when Stella and Horace get into a shouting match in the classroom, Miss Liliana banishes them to the principal's office. Will the two of them find a way to turn this opposite of a poem day around? You'll have to read and find out. So this is a story about school and friendships. It is a good read for any kid who has, like I said, just finished their um, leveled readers and they're not quite ready to go to full on chapter books yet. Um, or if they are, like I said, some of our older readers who used to read the Mercy Watson series, this still includes Mercy, as you heard, and um, it is book number five in a series. So if they're interested in what happened to Mercy after her series, maybe check out Stella's series. It might be mentioned in there. All right, our next book is part of the Warrior series. If you have not heard of the Cat Warrior entire world, there are so many books involved in this series by Erin Hunter. Um, if you are a fan of stories where there's action adventure and animals are just like people, this is definitely for you. Um, this is book three in the Broken Code series called Veil of Shadows. And um, I'm going to read the inside of it and tell you a little bit about it. But before I start, um, it is recommended as early as grade three. So um, our higher level third graders, if you are interested in a series about cats and what all kinds of adventures they get into, this is for you. If you're an older reader who really loves the lore of this, this is the newest addition to The Broken Coat. An imposter shadow is spreading across the warrior clans. A stranger rules Thunder Clan in Bramble Star's place, demanding that codebreakers named in a young medicine cat's shadow sight strange vision must be punished, and banishing any warrior who dares to stand in his way. As the false leader tightens his grip, suspicion begins to spread among the clans, and a vicious attack targeting shadow sight threatens to divide them all. In Sky Clan, Rootpaw knows it's time to share the truth about Bramble Star's ghost. But false accusations could spark war, and ThunderClan's leader's spirit has already begun to fade. How much longer before he and the clan's trust in the warrior code is lost forever? So again, this is recommended, grade three plus. Um, it is action adventure with cats as the main um, characters. All right. Our next book that we have here is part of a series that's already widely loved. Um, it comes for grades, I want to say starting in third grade, but some really, really strong second grade readers have probably jumped into it. Um, and even some of our older readers still love to go back and catch up on the series. This is Thea Stilton and the Race for the Gold. So it is Geronimo Stilton's counterpart, Thea Stilton with her sisters. The Thea sisters are in Brazil for the Summer Mouse Olympics. They've been invited to watch their friend Beatrice and her team train for the big race. Strange things start to happen during practices. The team's sneakers get stolen, their batons go missing, and the team members start to lose patience with one another. Can the Thea sisters help figure out what's causing all the trouble before it's too late? 
So you might have picked up, it is an action adventure mystery. So if that's for you, you should start checking out the series. All right, our next book is another James Patterson novel for children. Um, it also has an co-author, Chris Gravenstein. It is book number seven in the Treasure Hunter series, and this is The Plunder Down Under. Cross a vast desert full of deadly creatures, find a long lost treasure, and save the parents? All in a day's work for the kids. The kid family is on the hunt for Lassiter's gold, one of the infamous lost treasures of Australia. But when their ship is waylaid by pirate Charlotte Badger, the kid's parents are framed for stealing a set of priceless gems. Bick, Beck, Storm, and Tommy have seven days to navigate the dangerous Australian outback, find Charlotte Badger, and steal back evidence they need to prove their parents are innocent. If they fail, mom and dad will be found guilty and thrown into prison forever. So you got to check out the Treasure Hunter series. If you have not read it before, I recommend starting with book number one. But if you just want to jump right in, then try this one out. All right, for my next book, I was super excited to see this come across my desk because not only is it beautiful on the outside, but inside it's very colorful and vivid. I don't think I've ever seen a book like this one personally. So this book is Apaka, the Tree of Ekroff. It was created by Kobe Bryant and written by Ivy Clare. From the mind of Kobe Bryant comes a new tale of finding your strength against all odds. Set in an alternate classical world dominated by sports and a magical power called Grania, Apaka, the Tree of Ekroff, is the story of two children, the orphaned outcast Brovi and the crown princess Pritia, who uncover and battle terrible evil and discover their inner strength along the way. Apaka, the Tree of Ekroff, takes place at the world's Oh, I'm sorry, takes place at the most elite sports academy in the land, where the best ch child athletes are sent to hone their skills. When Rovi and Pritia arrive, each harboring a secret about themselves, they begin to suspect that something malicious is at play at the school. In the course of their first year, they must learn to master their grana in order to save the world. So this book combines two things that are rarely put together in a fascinating way, sports and magic. So if either of those are interesting to you, you should definitely check it out. And when I say it is beautiful, you can see some of the rainbow pages. It's like that all the way inside. It's such a neat book. Okay, for our next book, this is for our, we're starting to get into our older kids, so we're going fourth grade and up here. This is by Joan Bauer. It's called Raising Lumi, and as you can see, it is about a guide dog. Olive Hudson desperately wants a dog. She already bought a leash, a bowl, a chew toy shaped like a gorilla, and now all she needs is the puppy. But it seems impossible because she and her just met older sister, Maudie, have to move. That means a new home, a new town, a new job for Maudie, and a new school for Olive. They can't just add a puppy to the list. But then Olive spots the adorable golden puppies wearing green vests. What are those dogs doing? Where are they from? Once Olive learns that the puppies are being raised to be guide dogs for the blind, she knows she has to be part of the raising program. But can a 12-year-old girl do that? And could she handle the heartbreak of saying goodbye to the dog she's raised when it moves on to its new owner? Once again, Joan Bauer has crafted a story that is a true, heartfelt, and funny one about a girl who's determined to make a difference. So if you're looking for a story that's a good feeling, heartwarming story about a strong female character, this is for you. Okay, our next one is, we're going to the comedies here for our fourth, fifth grade and up. It's called Wink, a novel by Rod Harrell. Ross Malloy has always just wanted to fit in, but when he's diagnosed with a rare eye cancer, he's suddenly the standout cancer kid of the seventh grade. Now he has to deal with eye goo, weird hats, and a squinty winking eye. The hardest thing of all, disappearing friends, bullies, and the threat of losing his eyesight, or worse. 
Based on Rob Harrell's real-life experience and packed with comic panels and spot art, this is a heartbreaking and hilarious story of survival and finding the music, magic, and laughter in life's weirdness. So this story is, it does have some sad elements to it and some parts where he's dealing with his grief of everything he's going through, but it has a comedic spin and a way to appreciate what you do have in life. All right, our last book of the video series is The List of Things That Will Not Change. It is an LGBT book. It is by Rebecca Steed. This is in the interest level of fourth grade plus, and it's about family life. When B's in fifth grade, her father, divorced from her mother after coming out, prepares to marry his boyfriend, Jesse. B is delighted, but she's especially over the moon that this means she gets a sister in the form of Jesse's daughter, Sonia. When Sonia visits, though, she misses her family back in California, and she's not the immediate bestie that B had anticipated. After the wedding draws near, B must come to grips with her expectations, her anxieties, and the imperfections that are a part of life. As usual, Steed is the master of crafting a character with deceptive ease. B is a warrior with a few impulsive tendencies, sometimes desperate, sometimes angry, and sometimes well-meaning, but she's winningly affectionate and even hopeful at the same time. Her processing of some people's reactions of her father's marriage is believably naive. She's a savvy New York kid, but she's so joyful about Jesse that she doesn't always realize that everyone else, including her mother, who understandably has mixed feelings about her ex's new marriage, as well as a few homophobic characters, don't feel the same. Ultimately, B survives, thrives, and grows to, as love remains constant, but her world gets bigger and readers negotiating their own challenging lives will relate to her challenge and applaud her truth. So if this seems like a book for you or any of the other books that we have talked about in this video, you can put it on hold and it will be yours for two weeks at a time. Remember, check out the information below on the video of how to go about doing that. And hopefully I will see you guys again soon in another edition of our incoming June books. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.